Uh, today we are here to interview Ker Karen, uh, say elderly, Eberly. Eberly. and today is September 28, uh, Tuesday, and time is uh, 5 p.m. And we are here because um, we will interview with Karen about uh, her historic uh, houses and then I have some questions to her, but before we start, I would like to learn your a little bit background. Where did you born? When you are born? Uh, when you, did you born? And about um, a little uh, teacher experience. Can you give us a mm, little bit okay. background information? Um, yeah, I was born in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. near Philadelphia, in uh, 1950, and. My uh, mom was a nutritionist. My dad was an advertising man. And I couldn't wait to get away from there. And um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I uh, went to Penn State and got a degree, a couple of degrees in humanities and linguistics. Perfect. After a master's, I couldn't get a job. So I joined the Peace Corps and mm -hmm. went to South America. And then I realized there that I could work teaching English and that I liked traveling. Oh. So I came back and uh, came down here to the University of Florida and st got uh, certified in teaching English mm -hmm. and then went on for a PhD in linguistics and um, traveled a lot. So I ended up teaching in Japan mm -hmm. for 10 years mm -hmm. and in mainland China for one year. Mm -hmm. and directing a program there. Started, I was a pioneer in two places. Mm -hmm. cool. In other words, I started the program the first year mm -hmm. that it existed, and, uh, mm -hmm. and that was quite an experience. And did a lot of traveling all over Asia while I was mm -hmm. there and collected a, a lot of Asian stuff, and then mm -hmm. um, moved back to the States in 96, and that's when I saw this house for sale. Mm -hmm. And after living in tiny Japanese apartments, being six feet tall, yeah. when I saw these high ceilings <laughs> <laughs> and all the room, it's like, yes, I have to. This is my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plus, it has a lot of wall space to hang all the stuff I collected. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you buy alone or with your husband? With my husband, 50-50, paid cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were rich from Japan. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then how did you find hard. this house? On, on, where did you see this advertisement or on I sale? didn't see any advertisement. We just moved back to the States and stayed with his parents in Gainesville. Hmm. And the next day, mm -hmm. less than 24 hours back in the country, mm -hmm. we came to this neighborhood to just look around oh, cool. and saw the house for sale. Oh. And nobody was here. We came up and looked in the windows. Uh -huh. You know, and it was love at first sight. Oh, cool. So that was, yeah, spring of 1996. Mm -hmm. So I've been in this house, what's that, 26 years. 26, 26 years. 26 years. Oh, yeah. Cool. And um, uh, first, uh, do you know about the history about this house? I know a lot more now than I, I mean, I didn't know anything then. But there is the mm -hmm. Matheson Historic Center has Mm -hmm. or had, when I looked last, four files on this house. Mm -hmm. And we were given this when we moved in, the abstract of the title. Mm -hmm. So all this is history of this house mm -hmm. and the people that lived in it. Even mm -hmm. their wills and what they left. That, so we know there was a grandfather clock on the stairs that mm -hmm. was left to somebody and the mm -hmm. housekeeper and the, mm -hmm. you know, some of the personal stories of the people that lived here. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah. know about the first owner? It was built by John MacArthur. Mm -hmm. John. MacArthur. Yeah, who was the fire chief of Gainesville. Which year? 1895, 95. I believe. Now, it's official 1897, mm -hmm. but the, I was told that's the year it got on the maps, the mm -hmm. San, Sanborn or Sanford maps, I forget what they're mm. called. Um, so officially it was here in 1897, but I think the main part of the house was built a couple of years before that. Mm -hmm. I really don't know details about how it was added on to over the years. I wish I knew more about that. Mm -hmm. But he was a fire chief, so we have still seven working fireplaces and mm 
Mm. People tell me today, they're, of course, they're not up to code. They're up to 1895 code, but they were very well built. And the, the brickwork is such yeah. that nobody even knows how to do that today. Yeah, it's so cool. It's yeah, this is similar to the one in the Thomas Center, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, with, with the um, egg mm -hmm. and what do you call that motif now? Mm -hmm. My brain is failing me. Mm -hmm. Egg and dart, something like that. Um, that's the same. Yeah, so he, at that time, the fire department had a horse-drawn carriage for their fire truck, and they had three horses, and they named them John, Mac, and Arthur, after John MacArthur, who was the fire chief. Oh, the that name coming over there. The horses' names. Horses' names. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't li live here very long. He got a job in South Carolina and moved away, and then... Then it was owned by several people f for very short periods. Mm -hmm. There was a little flurry of exchanging hands there. Mm -hmm. But then Klein Graham bought it, mm -hmm. who was the bursar of the University of Florida and very active in local uh, mm -hmm. Rotary Club and politics and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's called the MacArthur Graham House. Mm -hmm. And he had it until he died here in uh, 1972. 1972. Yeah, at age 88. So he lived through all that time, but he had two wives die. Mm -hmm. um, the, the second one died in the early 30s, and then he turned this place into a boarding house. Mm -hmm. But he still lived here cool. with his housekeeper mm -hmm. named Pearl E. Flowers, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, left her his car. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, um, it was divided up into eight units, and we have all the this old, look at this uh, bug-eaten and water-stained paperwork, uh -huh. but I have the State Hotel Commission licenses mm -hmm. for all the years that this was called the Graham Apartments, mm -hmm. and it was eight units. So after his wife died in the 30s, he, he apparently turned it into mm -hmm. this boarding house deal. Mm -hmm. So we have them like for all through the 40s and the 50s, mm -hmm. all the license, you know, and inspections and everything from the state. Yeah, these were all up in the attic. And hotel and restaurant, they used mm -hmm. as a before? Mm. Yeah, Florida, the State Hotel Commission, State Hotel Commission license, and then it became Florida Hotel and Restaurant Commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it changed 50, it 50s. was still... Mm -hmm. State Hotel Commission, but then it became the Hotel and Restaurant Commission. Yeah, so they we have records of the inspections and the license fees they all they paid for all those years up until the 60s. And apparently in the 60s, Graham turned it into five big luxury apartments, mm -hmm. one of which is still the apartment mm -hmm. upstairs we still have. Mm -hmm. But the people that bought it in 1972 mm -hmm were the owners before me and Steve. And they turned it back into a single family house except for the mm -hmm. one apartment. Mm -hmm. But basically all they had to do was sort of take the nails out of doors. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's the Victorian style with mm -hmm. over 40 doors in this house. I counted them once, I forget the exact number now. <laughs> cool. And over 50 windows we have. Oh, but it's the house of doors, so many yes. doors. So they kind of just closed off areas to mm -hmm. make the separate, uh, the separate mm -hmm. yeah, apartments. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it didn't have indoor plumbing when it was built. Mm -hmm. So there was plumbing added here and there. And we still have original fixtures, a lot of original gas mm -hmm. chandeliers and wall sconces, you know, mm -hmm. that that's original, the one in there is original, which is amazing in a house yes. that was a rental for so long to yes. have kept that stuff. Yes. But because Graham lived here, mm -hmm. I believe he didn't let things walk away, you know. Oh, really? Yeah, people didn't steal things because the owner lived here. Mm -hmm. So all through, uh, you know, World War II and Korean War, the, this place rented to soldiers. And, mm. and the Thomas Center used to be a community college, so students lived here, a lot of students. Really? And still people come sometimes to the door, knock on the door, and they think we're giving tours. They think that yeah. I do tours because mm -hmm. it has the plaque. Uh -huh. And they, I say, well, sure, come in. You can walk through. But several people have come here who lived here. 
oh, cool. in the 60s, you know, had it, had like this part as, a, as an apartment or mm -hmm. that that section was their apartment. Uh -huh. And they remember, you know, coming in this door here and uh -huh. this is an outside door. We have five, actually six doors to the outside so on, the, the, this one, on the ground one, floor. And yeah. the, the other the side. Front door. Yeah, and there and there. Yeah. <laughs> five of them are functional. One's we just five stuck in shut. different uh, apartments. Five. Well, yeah. At one time, there were eight. Eight. Yeah, for decades, there were eight units in here. Mm -hmm. And oh, I'd love to know exactly how that was divided up. But yeah, the people that owned it before us was the family uh, called the Jesters. Mm -hmm. Their name was Jester. Although people think that, you know, they, this was called the Jester House, mm -hmm. and then people thought that was a reference to the kind mm -hmm. of circus-like crenellations mm -hmm. on the roof. Uh -huh. But no, that was their name. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and Mr. Jester was actually quite a comedian. He was a professor mm -hmm. of psychology, but he, uh, in education, but he was a ventriloquist and a, a kind of a mm -hmm. performer. What about the garden, also specific garden, um, the same garden or smaller right now? In the past, it was bigger than this one? Um, well, yeah, the, uh, Graham owned the lot behind here too, mm -hmm. um, all the way to 3rd Avenue. Mm -hmm. oh. And that house was actually built for their daughter mm, and see. her husband. And um, at one point then it was sold off Mm. as a separate property, so it's not part of this property anymore. Mm. Uh, who was the... Yeah, I can't remember the the name of the woman that they bought this land from, but it's in here. Mm -hmm. Everything is in here. <laughs> Everything's in here. These are fading, but yeah, these have all the records of the sales from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And this goes back, this property goes back to Look at this. Mm -hmm. The Spanish land grant. Mm. Yeah, here's the map, original map of original Gainesville, our neighborhood here. Um, yeah, 1816. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the King of Spain, you know, granted the land in Florida for colonization purposes. Mm. That includes this land. Mm -hmm. 1816, yeah. the land grant. Yeah, Arredondo was his name, um, the governor here. Actually lived in Havana for a long time mm -hmm. that governed here. But yeah, so we have all these documents. And Pretty crazy. This house is older than the other houses or they are at the same period well, almost? Pretty similar. Mm -hmm. No, actually the Eaton's house is older. Mm -hmm. It's 1880s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next door I think is 1906 mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. A little later. Mm -hmm. But I have a picture. I have two uh, postcards oh, that show this street in 1906. Oh. And that house is there. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, though, they, they don't show this house. They just show the front yard because um, we're set so far back. Yeah, you are back. We have mm -hmm. a big front yard, but a very small backyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the property is just 100 feet by 150 feet, and it's been that way for 100 mm -hmm. years. Until these surveyors came up here a few years ago and decided that the whole property was four feet north of where we think it is and cut off our four feet of our yard and cut our driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still mad about that. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> what are you going to do, though? Yes. Apparently, in the 1800s, there were two different maps of the neighborhood, and they didn't agree. Yes. So I could go to court and fight it, but yes. it's a toss-up which one they're going to follow. Yes. And I, the, I stand to gain back two feet. You know, we, mm -hmm. we would split the difference, so mm. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. Yep, but we... <laughs> We love this house, and uh, mm -hmm. but you use as a single house. You'd never separate, just the only yeah. upstairs. Yeah, upstairs we've had various people mm -hmm. living in there over the years. A lot of students, or a lot of friends of ours, or fellow teachers, like who are getting masters in linguistics or getting certified to teach English, because 
we were both teaching in the English Language Institute, so, so nice. um, you know, we'd offer up that apartment to mm -hmm. colleagues and mm -hmm. always have somebody in there, somebody good in there, like you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for having me. What about the lifestyle? Do you think they have they used the inside of the house? How was the domestic life in here? Well, like I said, it was a single family house, you know, mm -hmm. for for Mr. Graham mm -hmm. and his wives. That, but unfortunately, he had two of them die quite young. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then when he turned it into a boarding house, it was apparently rented out a lot and a lot of people I've had a I have a friend who's a psychic a professional psychic mm -hmm. who came here and said do you want me to do a reading of what I feel in the house mm -hmm. and I said yes please yeah. and she said it's like a circus in here mm -hmm. she said there's so ma much energy and so many people came and went that there was so much going on yeah you know with the changing mm -hmm. of people and mm -hmm. renting I mean eight units of people coming in and out yes from the early 30s, mm -hmm. you know, all through the mm -hmm. war and through 40s, 50s, 60s. So um, there's a lot of energy in here, and there's also, there were a lot of ghosts mm -hmm. in here. And um, a lot of auditory uh, phenomena, I mm -hmm. guess I'd say. Mm -hmm. But I had those cleared, and since then I've learned myself how to clear that energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were friendly. Yeah. But still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. <laughs> Various people actually had experiences and described in detail that they saw mm -hmm. okay. f figures and they heard things. I've heard things. In fact, my husband and I, the first week in the house, we were woken up at four in the morning. We were sleeping in that room. And we were woken up by the sound of somebody sweeping the floor in the kitchen. Really? At four in the morning. Oh. Yeah. I wake up and I, I, first I was scared, but then I thought, who would break in a house and then sweep the floor? Yeah. You know, so I was more curious uh -huh. than scared. And we went in there and we turned the light on and n nothing, see nothing, but we're still hearing it. Someone sweeping the floor, That's the wooden strange. floor with a broom. And so I walked right to the spot where I heard the sound and I stepped right on it yeah. and it moved ahead of me. Really? You and feel I kept it? Follow, I kept walking where I heard the sound and it kept moving ahead of me. And I walked it all the way through the kitchen and the breakfast nook and into where the bathroom starts and it's tile floor and then it uh -huh. stopped there. But this took quite a while and Steve was there and the whole time we heard this. Sweeping, and it was the rhythm of how somebody sweeps. The still you are hearing? This and the kind exact of... sound. No, never again. One time. That was the housekeeper. That was Pearly Flowers. Oh. It, several people confirmed that. She was just like announcing her presence to us, I think. I think so. Uh, yeah. That's the first experience I ever had like that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, mm -hmm. but it was undeniable, and we both heard it for a long time. And it, I went under the house and tried to see if something could have been brushing. It wasn't windy outside. It wasn't plants. It wasn't animals. Yeah. There's joists. There's no way something could move like that under the floor. It was clearly some kind of supernatural phenomenon. What, what, but anyway, the, maybe that's off the topic. Anyway, <laughs> the other houses like that, you, only you have this kind of whole story? The other houses they, they no, neighbors. there are some other stories around here, yeah. And yeah. Norman Hall on campus, where I used to teach, that had quite a few stories. Go, there's uh, publications about ghosts in Norman Hall. Oh, yeah. Really? Okay, another story. <laughs> what about during the uh, you own this house? Did you add something new in this house, a conditioner or any? The material you add? Well, when we bought it in 1996, it did not have central heat and air. Okay. But the seller put that in mm -hmm. before we moved in. Mm -hmm. um, and we took out the old gas heater. Mm -hmm. There were two gas heaters mm -hmm. um, in here. It was mainly gas was used for heat and light in here. Mm -hmm. Well, it was pre-electric. Yeah. yeah, but then they just wired the chandeliers or gasoliers they were called, mm -hmm. I guess, 
wired the wires into the gas pipes and made them, mm -hmm. made them electric. Um, so that was done when we moved in. And I, I tiled a bathroom floor. Mm -hmm. I took linoleum off another floor and then finished the wood underneath. But basically, no, we haven't done major stuff. Except the outside, of course, we had to repair rotten wood and paint mm -hmm. and window screens. My husband rebuilt all 50 some of them one summer. That's all he did the whole summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we still have the old double hung windows um, mm -hmm. and they're not painted shut. Most of them still open. Mm -hmm. You know, the house was built to utilize the uh, airflow. Mm -hmm. It had a huge fan in the attic mm -hmm. that would draw air all the way through, up mm -hmm. and out. Mm -hmm. So it would pull in the cool air in the evening and blow it out the top. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and by opening doors, um, you can really, you could control yeah. that. So I, could, I see how they could live till 1972 with no AC. Yeah, yeah just the air. So yeah, by controlling the sun mm -hmm. and the airflow. And that's what it's built for, and it's up off the ground, so there's uh -huh. airflow underneath, mm -hmm. so it doesn't get all wet yes. and mildewy. You don't have ground base right here? N no. No. Not in the other houses, nothing? Uh, no, I was really surprised to see a house for sale up on Northwest 4th Street that has a basement. Mm -hmm. But that, I think it's the only one in Gainesville. That's very rare, because the yeah. ground is wet. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't work. I can't imagine that basement mm -hmm. is dry. But anyway. What about preservation? This house is the historic preservation list, right? Yeah, we're number six on the Thomas Center tour. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, historic, but we don't, I mean, we don't um, mm -hmm. get any benefit from that. Yeah, I know. Uh, tax or break or anything. Mm. We are ruled by the historic mm -hmm. board or whatever they're called in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So I can't change the look of the house from the street. Mm -hmm. You can't change? No. And we're not permitted like to put on vinyl siding or something like that. So you have to keep replacing the wood. Mm -hmm. And our, we have those crenellated towers, mm -hmm. which are very bizarre. All that flashing has to be custom made mm -hmm. for those. So very expensive. Roofers go up there and they they propose right away to redo it mm -hmm. to something that's easier mm -hmm. to maintain, but we, we can't. But they also um, uh, interested in the house inside. You cannot change anything in the house? No, inside you can do whatever you want. Mm, I see. And they don't regulate color pretty much. Hmm. I think though if you painted it something really garish, they would not approve, mm -hmm. but generally they don't care what color. Mm -hmm. This color you change, <laughs> but this is the original color. No, when we bought the house, it was all gray, cosmopolitan all gray, gray mm -hmm. the same gray. And we have clabbered and we have shingle. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people call this a shingle house. Mm -hmm. um, so I looked at a bunch of books of painted ladies in San Francisco and looked at the house mm -hmm. colors and everything. And I decided to stay with the gray for the clabbered, mm -hmm. but paint the shingle a darker gray. Mm -hmm. So you could see the diff architectural difference, it would stand out. Yeah. And then use that barn red, mm -hmm. which is the front door, as an accent. And I got the idea to paint two rows of shingle red mm -hmm. just above the stone columns. Mm -hmm. So it used to be this pale gray all the way down and then kind of sandy gray stone. Mm -hmm. And when I put the two rows of red there mm -hmm. to separate that, mm -hmm. people suddenly noticed we had stone columns. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They said, what? You have stone columns. Mm -hmm. they, they never noticed them before, yeah. but that red made it stand out. Yes. Yeah, and then we put red, you know, along other, mm -hmm. the attic triangle and red on the crenellations. Mm -hmm. I was afraid that would make it look like a circus house, but it, it wasn't, mm -hmm. it's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so my uh, mother-in-law said it was like putting lipstick on a face, <laughs> putting that red on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we spruced it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. How many rooms in that house did you count it? I, you know, maybe 13. 13. But it's not really clear what's a room. Yeah. You know, like the front entryway. Entryway. It's kind of a big space, mm -hmm. but 
and the hallway upstairs is really wide and strange. Mm -hmm. And th that little space right there, is that a room? Not mm -hmm. really. Yeah, so it's sort of hard to mm -hmm. say. And the function of the rooms is not really clear. Yeah. Because they have had different functions over the years. Mm -hmm. you know. How was the furniture you've, you bought first time? The people have, what kind of furniture they have? The similar or? Uh, old style, how was it? When I when we bought the house, the Jesters had really dark, heavy antique furniture mm. in here, almost black, mm. that she said I could buy, but I didn't like it. Mm. So I said, get it out. Yeah. And I brought, I, I myself am a thrift shop person, <laughs> plus I inherited a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I have two tables made by, in the 1700s by my ancestor in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania that I brought down here. Mm -hmm. Things like that. I have old furniture and mm -hmm. thrift shop furniture. And it, I like antiques and yeah. I like the Victorian era and I have a lot of Asian stuff. As yeah. you notice, that stair step yeah, tonsu. Beautiful, yeah. I brought back from Japan the women's floor vanities, mm -hmm. two of those and several other Japanese shoe cabinets and things like that furniture. So mm -hmm. Asian stuff goes really well with Victorian era. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they used a lot of Chinese mm -hmm. porcelains and things in the decorating, and I, I'm mm -hmm. totally into that. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the clutter mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the little giga things on, on every surface, you know, fits with Victorian too. Cool. Yeah, it's definitely not mid-century modern or, or <laughs> yeah. scan design or anything like that. But I like the floor. It's but original, the floor, right? the whole house is heart pine, mm -hmm. heart of pine. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there were three major fires in this house, which mm -hmm. isn't surprising because gas, yeah. flames, you know. They have wall sconces with flames mm -hmm. on each side of the window, and I'm sure they had draperies there, you know, mm -hmm. it was like asking for a fire. Mm -hmm. So the, a big one was in 1923, and they, it burnt at the front of the house. In fact, I looked up on microfiche in the library, the news reports that 12 people were arrested in their Model T Fords outside for gawking at the fire and getting in the way of the firefighters. Yeah, so this house, a lot of it burned, and we still have the charred rafters in the attic. Mm -hmm. But uh, they replaced it in the, in the 20s, and they extended room, that room out and widened the staircase. Mm -hmm. Um, and the narrower floorboards are from the 20s. They're still hard of pine, yes. but they're not as wide as the 1895 ones. Mm -hmm. So you, you can tell what was... Differences. Yeah, you can tell that difference. But it, the whole house is hard pine, and by now it's kind of petrified wood, mm -hmm. so you can't even hammer a nail in. Yeah. You have to drill a hole mm -hmm. and then put the nail. Mm -hmm. How many too hard. fireplaces in this house? Seven. Seven. Do you use? Did you use before mm -hmm. them? Oh, during the We're winter not time. We're supposed to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not really. But they work great. Yeah. yeah. But they're not up to code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fun to sit here. <laughs> <laughs> we just make small aesthetic fires. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No, the raging. You know, trying to heat the house with it. Uh huh. Um, but yeah, this one, that one. Definitely, and the one in there gets a lot of use. That's, mm -hmm. That room, I believe, was also added on in the 20s. 20s? And we have all that leaded glass, the leaded uh -huh. glass windows, which I hope survived the hurricane. Yeah, I hope. And, the, you know, and the one in here, that you beveled glass them. one, yeah, that I have all taped up and protected with plexiglass, so it, mm -hmm. it will survive, I hope. Mm -hmm. And do you know about the structure of the house? It's a very strong house. I think so. <laughs> it was built to last. Although I was just telling um, that the, there's a pier right here, so the, the floor, over a hundred years, the floor has kind of settled, <laughs> so there's a hump mm -hmm. in the floor. But at the rate it's going, I guess it'll be stable for a long mm -hmm. time to come, I hope. Mm -hmm. The structure uh, was built in a way, I, don't, I forget the term for it, but where the walls go all the way up, mm -hmm. the vertical walls go all three stories. Okay. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, there's no... 
no division concrete, in between. Just, just no. a brick, right? Brick and wooden. So an animal can get in mm -hmm. under the house and mm -hmm. crawl through the wall all the way up and mm -hmm. come out in the attic. Yes. Which has happened. Mm -hmm. But I've tried to plug up all those holes so they mm -hmm. can't do it again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. So we, no, we haven't done that much, you know. The previous owner to us put in two more stained glass windows. Mm -hmm. One from an old church and one that she had custom made. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's leaded glass, be leaded beveled glass, leaded glass, seven windows all around there. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot that I believe is original mm -hmm. or at the latest it was put in in the 20s after that fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the upstairs, I know the my bathroom is a balcony before, and then you co covered, yeah. converted as a bathroom. That, yeah, that was just a, a porch, porch or a Florida room with all those windows. Mm -hmm. But phew, I need somebody to rebuild that wood up there. Mm -hmm. I hope you didn't try to open those windows because they're falling yeah. apart. No, I didn't try. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, the wood rot is the bane of my existence. Mm -hmm. Yes. What about pet controls? Because the house is <laughs> like wooden. termites. Termites. Yeah, termites. Those too. May they rot in you know where. Yeah, I just had to have it tented. I've, I've tented it twice. In a year or? No, what? no. Oh just heavens! It's no. In the whole time we've been in the house. Oh, two times. Yeah, mm -hmm. just had that done in in uh, the end of June. Mm -hmm. So, knock on wood, I hope those don't come back. Yeah, they were just eating away. Eating? Yeah. It's hard to eat the old hard pine. That's one advantage. It's very... Yes. It breaks their little teeth, I think. Maybe windows or doors they eat. Any newer wood or any wood that got wet. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, mm. keeping the, you know, roof leaks and things like that, keeping the water off the house. Mm -hmm. You know, I lived in Japan for 10 years and I saw how they put overhangs way out yeah. over the house so the water's dripping here and the house yes. is here, yet smart. Yeah. Because here, that, no, it just no. runs right down the, and yeah, rots the all the siding and the windowsills and frames and everything gets wet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'd like to rebuild that, but I'm not allowed. Mm, yes, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. So I, we really haven't done that much to this house other than mm -hmm. little cosmetic things. And there, there's a, a, the door to the outside there has all those beveled glass windows around mm -hmm. the, the main one. And mm -hmm. my husband replaced all the little moldings in each one. Uh -huh. Little quarter round, oh, mm -hmm. major project mm -hmm. uh, for, to do that. But, you know, it takes a long time to do one little project like that. Yes. So we haven't done anything like knocking out walls or mm -hmm. I haven't, I've spot repaired plumbing and electric. Mm -hmm. So basically it's, you know, wired in the seventies, this house. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, we <laughs> just keep hoping it'll, yeah. it'll last. And how did you use front yard in your house? Mm -hmm. I mean, just the We've got some good graduation parties out there. Oh, cool. Good yard sales. Yeah. Yes, it's perfect for yard sales. You can set up tents. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had bands playing out there. Oh. <laughs> also in Halloween, it's a graveyard. Oh, I like it. I would really decorate that, yeah, the front yard. Oh, have fun. And we had Halloween parties in this house because it's kind of spooky. It's perfect for them. Yes. I like it. And, and porch is also beautiful. Yeah, the to hang I out. love the porch. Uh -huh. Yeah, the big too. front porch. And we have a screened porch on that side and a little screen porch on this side. Mm -hmm. So those are really nice. I wish we had a second floor screen porch or a second floor porch, period. Mm -hmm. I love those, but we're not so lucky. Mm -hmm. They have two of them next door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I love that. You never moved. You never think about to move it, this house? No, really. And this is the only house I've ever owned. Mm -hmm. We, Steve, too, this is our only house. And we mm -hmm. just, but this is it. Yeah. When we, I saw the house, I thought I could, it's very flexible. You can yeah. do a lot with it. 
Yeah. You could have a group of a lot of people living here, or it could be a single family, or yes. we could rent out parts of it. We could rent out the whole upstairs yeah. and just live downstairs. Right. You know, I thought if someday I get old, I can't yes. get up the stairs. Uh, yeah. We could just live downstairs mm -hmm. and rent the whole upstairs. So it, it has a lot of options. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and the rental income made it affordable, too. Right. So, um, yeah, we just plan to stay here. I can't imagine selling it. I really love it. Yeah. I really love it. Because it, I was thinking it's so big to care yes. every step, every time it takes time. It is big and there's a lot just to get around and keep it mm -hmm. straightened up and mm -hmm. cleaned and yeah. cleaning and, that just, and not even repairing. Yeah, repairing. The repairs mm -hmm. are a, a big deal. Yeah, I remember the window. You, yeah. you still didn't work. Still. No, just... he has not agreed to fix it yet. I'm still waiting to hear. Mm. Yes. And then I need somebody to cut the tree away from the back of the house. Yes. And it, it, screens are rotting and then mm -hmm. the shingles are falling off. <laughs> <laughs> That's so far. But uh, you just have to not worry about that stuff. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Nice. Yeah, I just uh, try to deal with it as it comes up. And mm -hmm. uh, Do you have old pictures of this house? I wish I had more. No, mm -hmm. I don't. There are some in files at the Matheson. Mm -hmm. Did you find all the documents from Madison? I did. Yeah, I didn't copy them. I left them down there pretty much. Mm -hmm. This is just the, you know, the abstract of the title, like I said, and then all of these documents of when it was mm -hmm. a boarding house. Mm -hmm. um, People and all the inspections they did and everything then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that I don't have I wish I had some more, and I think that um, mm -hmm. there is, a, there is, you know, the people we bought it from, the, the parents are both passed away, but they had three sons who still live around here. Mm -hmm. And one of them has a bunch of photos, but he just won't come over with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the other son is kind of our handyman. <laughs> But he's one of these handymen that only shows up once every three years or so, and he mm. leaves jobs unfinished and then disappears. So mm. if I can get him back here, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to work on him some more to get some of those photos. Yeah. I did see one that indicated the original house, it was painted brown. Mm -hmm. And it, they had, um, during the war, they had the porches enclosed, mm -hmm. and they were really? living areas. Huh. Yeah, they had sort of jealousy windows yes. on them. Mm -hmm. And when we moved in, there was a bathtub out on that porch. Mm -hmm. So that was hooked up. Mm -hmm. So that was somebody's bathroom, mm. uh, or at least bathing area. Maybe. And then there's a little toilet room next to it. Yeah, so those were, you know, the people in, that bought it in the 70s took that off and did a lot of work uh, on the house. Mm -hmm. They refinished the floors, but poorly. I think they had their kids mm -hmm. do it, do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they wired it mm. in 1970s wiring and did a lot of, like, removing paint. Mm. All of that wood, that whole room is wood paneled and there's built-in cupboards and they removed all that paint. Mm -hmm. Big job. Yeah, big job. And then the the father died of uh, cancer, probably a lot, I think, from all the toxicity of doing that work mm -hmm. without protection. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. The house is full of history. It's amazing. <laughs> All the people that lived here over the years, it's, yeah. it's countless people, it's, really. It's nice to, during the World War II, the soldiers lived here. It's yeah. an interesting story. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the, the um, Thelma Bolton Center is right across the street. It's a community center. That was also sort of a military mm. building in, used by the military at that time. Mm. 
And Unfortunately, they let the termites get to that, and now it's condemned. You can't go in. The, the roof, roof might fall down. Oh. Yeah, so the neighborhood is helping to the city decide what to do with it. Hmm. Try to re rebuild it or just demolish, demolish. it. Demolish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. It, it's too bad that it, they let it go. And very well, a uh, convenient area to is close to UF. Yeah. And yeah. most professors live here, I think so, right? Mm -hmm. They live Quite here. a few. Yeah, we rode our bikes to campus. T ten minutes, I could be there oh. for years from here. And it took me eight minutes to walk from here to the Hippodrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Theater. Convenient. Yeah, I used to go to a lot of things downtown and work at the Hippodrome. And, cool. Um, be active in the theater, that across town theater down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. So I'm looking forward to walking again and doing it again. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, would you like to share a, a special memory about this house or something special in your life or birthday party new, or <laughs> any memories about this house? Mm -hmm. Not really. I mean, the Halloween parties are just are a highlight. I mentioned those, and I mentioned mm. the sweeping ghost story. <laughs> that you know was an amazing experience that yes. introduced me to the world of things unseen. Yeah, um, interesting. And, <laughs> and, he, uh, and I, he, she, he was scared, or no? I, he didn't act scared. I pushed him in there first, ahead of me, you know, he had to go first. Was I was scared. But when I realized nobody was there that we could see visible, there was no thief or anything in the house. But there was this sound of sweeping, which is not threatening, yeah. right? But just really, really strange and yeah. intriguing. Yeah. <laughs> and then quite a few people had experiences here with um, covers being pulled off them at night and people talking to them at night, hearing voices in the stairway, mm -hmm. hearing the sound of footsteps going up and down the stairs, hearing people falling down those back stairs, which I'm sure happened a number of times. They're very steep, uh -huh. right? It must yeah. have happened multiple times. I, I fell down. Steve fell down, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had, to, we, people saw, you know, ghosts walking by had all kinds of stuff happen. Mm -hmm. But now they're gone. Okay. They're gone. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> uh, what about, uh, uh, because different two story, and you have ha attic too, and then yeah. I know the voice, you just scream, and then you hear. Yes, the speaking tube. Speaking tube. An old and speaking tube is original. When they edit, or is already original that's original oh yeah i believe it's original the back stairs were the servant stairs the housekeeper's stairs uh -huh. to the kitchen directly okay. to the kitchen and then the speaking tubes down in the kitchen okay and it goes to the second story so you could call somebody mm -hmm. when needed to come down and if you it's a whistle mm -hmm. whoosh, you blow in there and it goes whoo, really loud but if you turn the little whistle away you can talk into it Mm. And the person upstairs can hear very Still clearly. Still working? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just mechanical, simple mechanical. Mm. Cool. Speaking tube, I think is what they call it. Okay. Yeah, it still works. So that's an original thing to the house. Very and cool. the, yeah, the fact that we have a lot of original glass doorknobs and mm. brass fixtures. Yeah. Bra mm -hmm. You know, the... Um, yeah, I like it. Yeah, a couple of the, the chandeliers are, are amazing. Mm-hmm. Very ornate ones in there with leaves mm -hmm. on them. Yeah, I, it's wonderful to have those because I'm an old house fan. And I, we used to have a spring tour of homes in this neighborhood mm -hmm. where maybe five or six homes would open up and you could go through and they'd have somebody there giving a brief history. And mm -hmm. I went on those all the time mm -hmm. and, you know, would look at everything. And I go to yard sales and estate sales, too. And mm -hmm. I must admit, there was a house down this street same age mm -hmm. that was being sold and they were stripping it and I mm -hmm. hate when they do that I mean they were taking out all the fixtures they were even taking the brass kick plates off the doors mm -hmm. and selling them they were taking the fireplace screens and mm -hmm. selling them separate and all this mm -hmm. so I bought them 
I bought everything I could out of the house because it's on my same street, yeah, same, same age, same age. And I put those things into this house. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. Perfect. I got there. Yeah, the fireplace screen in there is so cool. I mean, yeah. they had amazing stuff. Oh, With some doorknobs. Um, you know, the the door plate, doorknob plate, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. We have hinges. The door hinges are so intricate upstairs, but they were all painted over. So just removing the paint from those mm -hmm. is, you know, a couple of days work from mm -hmm. one. Cool. So we have, still haven't done them all. Mm -hmm. cool. But little details like that in this house are mm -hmm. really something. Yeah, of course. So I've, I admit I bought those things out of the house, but they were selling them off. Somebody would have bought them and taken them who knows where, but at least I kept them right in the neighborhood, right on, it was on 4th Avenue. Yeah. 4th Avenue and 7th Street, that house on the corner is for sale again. It's changed hands many times. Mm, that's yeah. not good. Yeah. I mean, I would like to keep the original. Right. You know? Keep those things with the house. Yes. Yeah, it kind of broke my heart to see them selling yes. that stuff. But it's like, I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take it. I'll take it <laughs> and put it in here. And then hopefully it'll stay with this house. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with this house now. I don't have any family, really. Oh. Yeah. You want it? I would love to. <laughs> you will give me. <laughs> I would love to live here. <laughs> yeah, of something course. to think about. Yeah, I will think about that. <laughs> yeah. So cool. It's... Okay. Um, if you want to add something, I would like to hear. We would like to hear. Mm -hmm. As a last sentence. Yeah. Um... No, yeah, I don't know. I... Uh, the living in the historic house is different from the modern house. Yeah, you had that yes. loss of experience in the... In... This is true, I think. I've, I've rented in the modern houses, although I always gravitated toward the old. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in the 50s and I didn't like that because I just like been there, done that. And mm -hmm. I like my grandmother's era mm. house and that's what this is a, yeah, a lot Victorian. of things in here like my grandmother mm -hmm. had or great-grandmother yeah mm -hmm. and I people often say oh how do you keep it clean how do you do yes. all this work but in a way I feel like I'm a caretaker yes. in a museum yes and it's an honor yep. to I agree. keep it up mm -hmm. you know to clean it and to maintain it yeah oh, um, mm -hmm. is, you know, I always kind of wanted to work in a museum, so yes. I got my wish. Yes. Correct. And it doesn't feel like just a, a routine task. It feels like a labor of love. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I love the feeling of the house. I just love being in the house. Yeah. And it, just looking at the beautiful glass windows and, and the, you yeah. know, Smells. the details. And, details. Yeah, smells. <laughs> The details of the woodwork, which is uh, hard to clean, all those little ridges, but it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And when I have people come try to repair it, they say, we, they don't build things like this anymore. We don't even know how to do this. The, yes. the windowsills are angled, so the water yes. runs off. They're custom cut, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. they don't do that anymore. We cannot. Mm -hmm. They can't even repair it, really. Yes. can't replicate it. Yes. So finding people... Mm -hmm. To do the work mm -hmm. is kind of a major, a major deal. Um, and when I find one, if people in the neighborhood, though, now that we have a Facebook neighborhood mm -hmm. page, mm -hmm. that's a blessing because they can share when they mm -hmm. find somebody good that can mm -hmm. do old stuff or wants to deal with old mm -hmm. stuff. They share that, and that's important. And did you attend the historic neighborhood uh, tour in here? And I never put this house on the tour. They always asked, but uh -huh. no, Steve said no, no. Mm -hmm. He didn't want people really knowing the layout of the house. Yes. We are close to downtown. We've had a few break-ins. Oh, I see. And I think it's to our advantage that the house is strangely configured. You, mm -hmm. It's not real obvious where to break in and where people might be. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, that's in our favor. And that it's set way back from the street is also in our favor. Mm -hmm. You know, and so he didn't really want 
people to be able to come in and I see. he didn't trust the people, uh, uh, trusted. But did you visit the other houses? Which one is your favorite? Oh, lots of nice houses. Lots of nice houses. Mm -hmm. But uh, right down the street, the, the Gracie Mansion mm -hmm. on 4th Avenue was built by the lumber magnate mm -hmm. of North Florida who cut down all the big old trees and mm -hmm. used the best pieces of wood in his house oh. as a showcase okay. of all the best old wood that oh. no longer exists. Oh. Yeah. Oh, original. Oh, so yeah. that one, that house, yeah, is really something okay. inside and has a second story porch. Mm. And also some uh, details, um, ornamentations or the other house was different from this one. Some mm, wooden orna yeah. or ornamentations. Yeah, this house isn't really fancy, you know. Our, mm -hmm. Our door frames are pretty plain. The fancier ones have <laughs> corner carvings, yes. right? Carvings. And yeah, and the built-in cabinet in there, it's kind of plain. Mm -hmm. um, the fireplace, like I said, is a lot like the Thomas Center. And when I first came in and saw that motif yeah. over there, it's the reverse swastika, mm -hmm. you know, or key yeah, fret I, design. I saw it before. It's all over Asian embroidery, Asian everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, when I saw that, I was just like, oh, we've got to get this house. We have, this is our house. Yes. Because I collect Asian textiles. Oh. They all have that motif on them. On the Yeah, fireplace. and then there it is on our fireplace. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, little details like that. I can just look at them and feel grateful. Yes. <laughs> that I get to be here, you mm -hmm. know, get to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see that all my Asian stuff kind of fits in nicely with it. Yes, they match together perfectly. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, is it possible also, can, can, I, can we take a picture and then we can give you back to picture and then for our archives? This is new pictures, Certainly. but you can keep. Oh, and okay, we yeah. can keep our archive too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you too. Thank you.